Now, in the Volta region, a gentleman is in the grip of the police for allegedly killing a, and heading a 12-year-old boy in Aveime in the central town district of the Volta region. Two other suspects have been picked up by the police for their alleged involvement in the crime, which residents describe as ritual murder. Speaking to John News, Volta Regional Police Public Relations Officer Sergeant Prince Dolbache explained investigations have been launched into the case. Director General of Public Affairs, ACP Kwesi Ofori, says there are strategic interventions to halt the activities of criminals. We are determined you know, to fight highway robberies wherever they are in the country, especially Bono East and the Northern Corridor. And we are determined to do that. Our observation pinpoint to the fact that the situation has been very perennial. It is a perennial legacy um, that needs to be stopped. And the acting Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Kufu Dampari, has pledged to the people of Ghana that we're going to stop it. And as a result, we deploy special anti-robbery tax force to the eastern region, specifically Afran Plains, the Samankesi areas. And then in the Bono East, the Bono East, that is KJG, Kwame Danso, Yeji, through Techiman and all other places. And we are determined to stop it. Our men on there carrying out special tax operations, targeted operations as well as maintaining general law enforcement on those routes. And we can say that things are moving on very well. Yesterday, in the Eastern Region of Fran Place, for instance, we arrested 21 people with various uh, arms, ammunition, and implements adapted to cause harm and mayhem. And we are so determined, in fact, um, We've, we are sweeping all those corridors, you know, to make sure that the good people over there live in peace and security. At a basim or in that environment should assist the police as we unravel the mystery about the murder of these two young men and what we saw in the uh, fridge or freezer. Uh, it is very unfortunate. And I believe that all of them need to rally behind the police so that we get to the bottom of the matter. Is this a lone crime or in partnership with others? And for what purpose? All these things need to come to the fore. And we may count heavily on the people of Abisim. And as the acting inspector general, you know, appeal to the chiefs and people of Abisim to support the police in his effort, you know, to get to the bottom of this matter. Secondly, also, the Inspector General appealed to the family, you know, to put up a liaison person so that we can work with, you know, and see to the logical conclusion of this case. And so far, so good. Uh, all assurances from the services of the clinical psychology from our counseling department have been met, and the team is now back. And we believe that the relationship might yield, you know, very fruitful. Uh, outcome. Let's do some more on this story. We can speak to security analyst uh, Dr. Ishmo Noma. He's also the chief executive officer of the Institute for Security, Disaster and Emergency Studies. Doc, I'm grateful for your time here on Joy News Prime. Uh, so the police identifies that this, first of all, is a perennial problem and they have rolled out some interventions uh, to deal with this. Do you find these interventions being taken by the police uh, to crack down on the situation reassuring? Um, I think for now, with spe specific regard to this particular set of crimes, they are doing the best that they can because uh, armed robbery is very dynamic, so you cannot actually preposition them. They only have to go after the criminals when it happens, and it looks like they have done a credible intervention right now. So let's... Let's congratulate them. And I know Christopher is very serious and a man of integrity. So he wouldn't he wouldn't put his name out there if he didn't believe in what he was saying. So 
I, I trust that they are doing the best job they can for now. Uh, and uh, you indicated that this is uh, all the crimes we're witnessing, maybe as a result of economic hardship, and the other part is the lack of logistics by the security agencies. Let's start with the economic hardship. How do you relate that to the happenings? Um, truly, everybody in Ghana knows that the times are very hard. Cost of food, food, basic food items have gone up. And the individual who used to earn money and used to care for about 10 people, today you can only care for about five people. So there's a, a large cohort of people that are unsupported by their family and, and relatives and friends. And so um, there is always a concern. I think government hasn't done a very good job in providing jobs for the youth. When you create 159,000 or so new jobs through one, F, uh, one, one district, one factory, it is, it is a good effort, but it's a drop uh, in the ocean. It is very, very minuscule. So I think um, even government itself recognizes that they need to do more, um, and the youth don't have patience to wait because when a man is hungry, uh, there's very little that he can do to really uh, pacify himself. And so um, I think the solutions have always been known, except that it is now that the youth are negatively reacting to the fact that they need jobs, the fact that they need money, and government is totally uh, unresponsive mm -hmm. to their needs. And on the part of the uh, you know, logistics that you talk about, um, is it really the case? Because we've heard the interior minister talk about how they have resolved the police, for instance. Uh, and the argument you hear others make is that it may not be necessarily a logistic problem, but the willingness of the police to go the extra mile uh, to resolve some of these um, you know, issues. Well, it's a combination of logistics. Government claims that they've given a lot of vehicles to the police, but the vehicles went to the top brass of the police. The CID people, the investigators, boots on the ground, don't have any dedicated vehicles for them to do their jobs, except those who are on patrol and so on and so forth. But I would like to see uh, my brother, Kosofori, uh, tell us, Ghanaians, how many CID uh, departments in, within the police, within uh, police stations that have been given vehicles to help them to do the investigation. How many have been given iPads, computers, for them to do the investigation? How many of them have a budget to do investigations when crimes are reported? You know, so the criminals know that the system is porous. And this is an odious task because the system has been neglected for a very long time. And we are now hoping that the new IGP will be able to pull some resources together. But I blame the chairman of the police power because the vice president of Ghana is the chairman. And he should see to it that the criminal justice system works well. The prison system has been neglected by almost every president of Ghana for the last 20 years. And we know that our prisoners are treated like sardines. Every time a president stands up to talk about rule of law, he doesn't understand technology. He doesn't understand prison system. Because you cannot tell me that we are following a, a rule of law government when you throw people in prison like garbage, like sardines, and you expect them to come out of that system and be good citizens. It's not going to happen. Very well. Dr. Norman, I'm grateful that you could join us on Join News Prime. That's Dr. Ishmael Norman, a security analyst.